Invincibility, huh? A surprisingly complex topic, especially competitively. And I'll tell you all about it. Of course you can roll, of course you can spot dodge, but those are boring. Of course you can pick up a Starman or a cloaking device, if you even count that as invincibility, but those are items. What we really care about are the advanced invincibility techniques. Or do we? When I say invincibility, you might think of all states in which a player is unable to be damaged as just that, invincibility. But in Melee, there are two different kinds of invincibility, true invincibility and intangibility. Invincibility occurs when you get a Starman or come down from the Angel platform. Attacks can collide with you and subject opponents to hit lag, but they don't do any damage. Think of it like Raiden punching Armstrong. Invincibility is important for Yoshi specifically, whose parry mechanic works due to the six frames of invincibility it has before it fully enters its shield. If a Yoshi player times it such that an opponent hits them during one of the first five of these invincibility frames, they take no damage or hit stun, and their opponent, still affected by hit lag, can sometimes be put into a significant amount of frame disadvantage, leaving Yoshi with ample time to safely counterattack. Intangibility occurs when you do things like spot dodge, roll, air dodge, and grab ledge. And this is the state that players mostly concern themselves with, and the state I'll mostly be talking about. In this state, attacks toward you don't even collide, nor do they subject your opponent to any hit lag. Think of this as trying to hit a ghost. Some moves, mostly up smashes, give body parts like heads and arms intangibility though some were forgotten to be given nose intangibility. This was probably done to make them better anti-air moves, and more effective at catching opponents descending upon you without trading. Other moves, like Peach's Down Smash, have intangible legs, and other moves still are given full body intangibility. Fox and Falco Shines are famously fully intangible for one frame, and Puff's Rest is intangible for 26 frames, for example. A number of up -bees are also given full intangibility. Donkey Kong's up -bee is intangible for 3 frames, Bowser's for 4, Samus's for 5, and most impressively, Sheik's up -B is fully intangible for a whopping 38 frames. Now, besides spot dodging, rolling, and the occasional attack, one of the most common tactics to attain intangibility in melee is grabbing the ledge, which gives you a flat 37 frames where nothing can hit you, regardless of character. From here, you can roll up, normal get up, or attack from ledge, each of which give you their own bit of intangibility depending on character. But you can also let go of the ledge starting on frame 9, which opens the door to a whole world of intangible options. If you're quick enough with these 37 frames, you can do an intangible aerial from ledge, an intangible special move, or an intangible refresh of the ledge intangibility, which we'll talk about later. From ledge you can also do the notorious advanced technique known as the ledge dash. The fabled ledge dash takes only a few steps. Grab ledge, let go of ledge and jump, then air dodge back onto the stage. Simple in concept, but to get any grounded actionable ledge intangibility, or galint, or intangibility you can act with while on stage, you have to be precise in a number of ways. Hang out on the ledge too long, and the intangibility you first scored from grabbing the ledge runs out. Hurriedly attempt to air dodge onto the stage too early, and you plummet to your death with no hope of recovery. Air dodge on stage too late, and get stuck in a rather clumsy, punishable state. Ideally, you let go of ledge as soon as the game allows you. Double jump on the very next frame, then air dodge as soon as you can without killing yourself to perform the perfect ledge dash leaving you with the most intangibility possible to do completely safe actions on stage for a short time. But these multiple frame-perfect inputs are a monumental task for a human to perform, and a dangerous one too, especially in a game with no buffer. This is why 99.9% .9 of the time, perfect ledge dashes aren't even attempted. You can think of the speed of a ledge dash as a trade-off between how much you want a lot of intangibility and how much you want to risk killing yourself. 
A lot of intangibility, though, does mean safer recovery from ledge, and more time to do intangible attacks as a sort of semi-offensive chump check on opponents being a bit too careless near the ledge. Situations which can sometimes even lead to entire stocks being taken. Every character in the game can ledge dash, but the timing of the technique and the amount of intangibility they can get on stage varies. Characters have different jump heights, different horizontal drift, and different collision boxes, all of which affect ledge dashing in their own little ways. When it comes to the amount of galint possible, Fox, as expected, is the best because that's just how it is, meaning even a subpar ledge dash is likely to give you at least some grounded actionable ledge intangibility. On the opposite end, Peaches is the worst, as she's the only character unable to gain even a single frame of galint from a ledge dash, leaving her completely vulnerable after doing this technique. This is largely due to her odd double jump causing her to dip vertically before rising, a trait she shares with Ness, Yoshi, and Mewtwo, who also have really bad ledge dashes. Her terrible ledge dash contributes to one of Peach's most glaring weaknesses, her difficulty safely getting off ledge. But this does illustrate a good point about how, while being able to get a lot of intangibility off of a ledge dash is powerful, it's not the be-all end-all someone lacking the full context of competitive melee might think it is. It's just a tiny part of a huge game. It didn't stop arguably the greatest melee player of all time from decimating with Peach, after all. Armada winning! Evo 2017 from winners. There are other ways to gain a lot of grounded, actionable legend tangibility, though. In fact, Peach has a cool one. It's harder and more precise than your typical ledge dash, requiring a custom notch to hit the angle consistently, but it exists. Simply grab ledge with Parasol before the umbrella opens, which freezes your collision box such that it's flattened at the bottom. Let go of ledge, jump on the next frame, then input a precise air dodge diagonally toward the stage. If you did it right, your collision box will unfreeze from its flattened shape as you come over the ledge, immediately grounding you and leaving you actionable. Done extremely quickly, you'll even get up to 9 frames of actionable intangibility, enough for many completely safe attacks. Timing at a frame off also grants 8 frames though, making this a 2 frame technique, and one that's not even that bad for Peach if you miss the timing completely. More common than weird things like Peach's are no impact lands, often shortened to nils. No impact lands are done by landing on a surface near the peak of a jump, which prevents the usual 2 to 6 frames of normal landing lag. Doing this from ledge can grant Falcon and Ganon more galint on stage than even their perfect ledge dashes, as it can be used to skip the usual 10 frames of Waveland lag. Ganon's is relatively easy. Just a frame-perfect ledge release into a frame-perfect jump while drifting in gets you a cool 9 frames, but even done a few frames late can get you a decent amount. He also has a more difficult one that gives him 18 frames of intangibility. This one, like the aforementioned Peach Tech, involves freezing his collision box with a ledge grab near the peak of his upbeat. From here, just do the ledge release and jump on stage. Falcon can get 17 frames, but his is a tad more tricky than Ganon's. It's the same idea, but Falcon has to drop from ledge and fast fall for one frame before jumping on stage. Aerial interrupts are another method of achieving galint, and sometimes offer a huge boost to characters with otherwise subpar options of getting on stage with a lot of intangibility. The galint! Do you see the galint? He's got too much. Similar to previous quirks that involve intentionally changing the shape of your collision box, aerial interrupts work by changing its shape while you're jumping back on. Certain aerials cause characters' collision boxes to stretch or be displaced vertically. By a lot and if they stretch into a solid surface, can ground you earlier than usual. This is especially useful if you can stretch your collision box into a solid surface during an aerial's auto-cancel frames. Frames typically before any hitboxes are active that you don't have to L-cancel and have innately low landing lag. 
Samus, for instance, who can get, at best, four frames of Galint from a ledge dash, has a very useful and humanly possible up aerial interrupt, one that Samus players have been doing in tournaments since at least 2014. To perform it, simply jump from ledge and up air 10 to 11 frames later. Done as quickly as possible, Samus gets 11 frames of Galint, but even a less than perfect one gets you 8 frames, double her ledge dashes. Mewtwo's neutral aerial interrupt is an even bigger improvement over its ledge dash, going from a measly 1 frame of Galint to 6 with a perfect aerial interrupt. Okay, let's talk fucked up shit. Because, theoretically, if you were a robot, you could become intangible in Melee forever. This is a fully intangible ledge stall, a tactic done by continuously refreshing ledge intangibility over and over in such a way that you never have vulnerable frames. Every character can do a fully intangible ledge stall, if not on every stage, then at least on one stage that's tournament legal. These ledge stalling techniques vary wildly across the cast in interesting ways, though. Characters like Fox and Falco have pretty hard fully intangible ledge stalls, both involving releasing ledge and using their upbeat to hover near it until their ledge grab lockout, a 29 frame timer preventing quick ledge re grabs is over. Note that the amount of intangibility you have left after a frame perfect ledge release and the ledge grab lockout timer are the same number of frames, 29. This means, for most characters, a fully intangible ledge stall requires a frame perfect ledge release. Let go of ledge just one frame late, and your intangibility runs out before the 29 frame ledge grab lockout ends. It's pretty simple if you remember that the number of frames late you are from releasing ledge is the number of frames you're vulnerable while stalling. But a few characters don't care about this. Remember the large amount of intangible frames Sheik's up B had? Well, this gives her quite a bit of leniency on her fully intangible ledge stall. So much so that doing this fully intangibly for lengthy periods of time is not only possible, but actually kind of easy in terms of melee tech. Plus, it has a hitbox to keep players away. Though, if a player catches on to the timing, they can still snag the ledge and force you on stage. Many characters can ledge stall with what's known as a hack dash. It's pretty much a reverse ledge dash, where instead of air dodging toward the center of the stage, you air dodge backward, off the stage again. If you're tass enough doing this with Luigi, DK, Samus, Puff, Mario, Game & Watch, Kirby, Falcon, or Ness, among others, when you wave land backward and slide off ledge, you'll grab ledge again without any vulnerability. Players like Wizrobe have made this technique a staple of their kit, and even when they don't do it perfectly, trying to contest it is just asking to be reverse need, nared, or grabbed to death. Just so you can get a little bit more survivability and have the possibility to tech what? as well. That was zero to death. Though, like Peach's negative Galint from the modest ledge dash doesn't keep her from being a good character, perhaps the most diabolical ledge stall in the game isn't one that's fully intangible. Not only because most of them are only in the realm of frame-by-frame -frame inputs, many of which risk suicide done by a human, but one that's so easily performed that, by merit of it being attached to a character with five airborne jumps and pound, it ends up being almost uncontestable for some characters. And I think there's a lot of beautiful irony there. Big thanks to Corrit, Dizzy, Droid, Dubs Rewatcher, Evan M, Grarlic, GR Smash, Harpo Dog, I Don't Even Play Melee, John B, Justin P, Catharg, Lenny M, Little, Lonely Rolling Egg, LRC Napkin, Matthew B, Moa, NK Cyborg, Pierce H, P Jiggles, PM Casey, Sega Monkey, Self Die Man, Shep If You Tried Meditation, Storm, The Big Beano, Trendrecht, Turn Down for Walt, Wyvern, and Yashichi.